2024 and beyond, experimental quantum computing could easily end up being a complete waste of time. A lot of companies, even IBM in the industry of quantum computing, have really been investing very heavily into this type of area for a long time. For instance, they have a center completely dedicated to their quantum computing efforts in, I believe, in Yorktown Heights around like upstate New York, where I used to went to school where I used to go to school when uh, I used to live in Ithaca, New York and upstate New York for five years. And I think that those types of strategic initiatives that IBM has been undertaking, it's something that for a long time was very important in terms of the expected commercial plan that they had for quantum computing and where it would end up going. But still, even though, for instance, IBM is one of the examples of such an industrial quantum computing company has ended up has ended up making changes, I still think that them, Google, Amazon, and a lot of other companies that have still been experimenting with quantum computing, even like NVIDIA, they're still all doing a really great job. But the thing is that they, those executives at those companies like Sundar Pichai in the instance of Google Quantum AI and how he had decided to pretty much implement a hiring freeze for the time being, instead of actually laying off any of the individuals or the workers in that department, he was really being prudent because he's just really trying to determine whether the you know whether the risks outweigh the potential benefits and in the case of google there could still be maybe some novel therapeutic application because even google has other types of departments that like amazon or other big tech companies they look at wearables like watches and things like that and that type of technology that can be used for you know monitoring and tracking you know human health or you know human uh, you know other vital signs that humans have when they're just pursuing their everyday routine normally and you know in a healthy manner in a normal way and just the matter of the fact that there's a lot of you know differences or differences in opinion namely in the case of ibm versus ibm and google is probably just because google at the time being because i would speculate and i would think that because of their superior capital position probably to ibm obviously they're able to you know be able to uh, you know just continue funding the quantum computing department but I think that either way we look at it is that IBM which is very much still a competitor a very strong competitor to Google in the quantum computing space from their own quantum computing department and initiative I mean it's still a really great undertaking because it really blends you know academic aspects of quantum computing and mathematics and applied mathematics within their industrial setting and I think that whenever any company throughout the, the tech industry is able to pursue that type of effort, that's a really great thing and that's always to be commended and praised for. But just the matter of the fact is that I'm just wondering as to whether maybe larger key industry players that maybe have access to a little bit more capital from quantum computing rather than just IBM would actually have to end up making a similar change to their commercial plans or namely downgrading their commercial plans because they may not feel as confident that the next generation quantum computer that could have some near-term applications that were be very beneficial for pressing problems, computational problems that they want to solve, whether that would actually end up being the case. And obviously we haven't received that, you know, uh, that um, we haven't received any such announcement from Google yet. So I'm not at all putting words into anybody's mouth. I'm just speculating about the possibility given the fact that, you know, given the fact that despite their you know, despite there being difficulties to synthesize and to build this quantum computing, uh, you know, the quantum computing archi architecture with the Sycamore chip, which despite the fact that it has 52 qubits there, only 13 of them can actually be used for quantum computation because when you're building up and synthesizing an next generation quantum processor and quantum computer, you have to have logical qubits, which are basically ancillary qubits, additional qubits from whatever qubits within the, each one of the chips that you're time evolving so that you can ensure that there's a logical computation taking place throughout each, in, each instance of the time evolution. And I mean, we'll see what happens more in terms of whether other types of industry players will go down. But I think in terms of smaller quantum computing companies, they're definitely feeling a lot of pressure, especially even in the cases of how to quantum computing, them having to shut down, you know, and cease operations and shut down and close their offices. I mean, that's extremely disappointing because that was really a company that had for a long time really seemed to be generating a lot of noise about the potential uses and the potential benefits for quantum computing. And um, 
I just feel like, unfortunately, the direction in which the quantum computing industry is going, a lot of ways it's paralleling, it parallels and it has, establishes a lot more of a perspective and a broader, you know, a broader vantage point of the entire tech sector is that it's really showing how a lot of these really niche technologic, technologically advanced companies, they're really struggling to, you know, formulate commercial plans. And in having to continue with these efforts, it really makes it difficult for them to completely sustain themselves, even in this economy and in this, uh, you know, capital environment.